Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Rosie Henshaw. If you're new here, then hey, hello, thank you for coming. <laughs> and if you're already existing, then hi guys, thank you so much for coming back. So today's video, I'm really excited about, I'm not gonna lie. I'm combining loads of decor tips and showing you how I get really cheap items and turn them expensive to get like the latest trends in decor, like accessories and stuff. So grab yourselves a nice hot drink. Mine's like a lemon um, green tea, so it's green tea. You don't really even taste that much like lemon. And mine's in my Union Jack Emma Bridgewater mug. I stopped doing that and people were like, you're not telling us what mug you're using today. And we quite like collecting cups too. So I'm back doing my mugs again. Apparently it makes you really healthy, so I'm really trying to have some green tea. Not cutting back on the cake, just adding a little bit of green tea. That makes that makes sense, Rosie. Um, so the trends that are out at the moment that I'm absolutely in love with is sort of like rustic sort of colours, so you know like the woods and the blacks, like the metals. I'm loving that and I'm having a little bit of that in my bathroom at the moment. Um, and also I'm loving macrame, so like really natural materials, like linens and stuff with like big tassels and macrame and um, wall hangings, a lot of wicker and baskets and sisal and jute, like all the natural kind of things that you can use. And I'm also loving like stone pottery, so stuff that you can get all like the big bobbles on it. Obviously I've always loved pottery, but I'm really loving like the big stone earthenware jugs and bowls. All these things tend to be really expensive in the shops. Um, so what I've done is I've tried to curate a video with stuff that I already have at home and when everything gets back to normal, I'm going to go full throttle on this and I'm going to set it up to be my mission and do five items that are literally dirt cheap either from the charity shop or the pound shop and we're going to make them really look expensive and to each piece will be a design that's in at the moment so we can show that we can get a piece from that design super, super cheap. But this is my little version of it from the stuff that I already have at home without going to the shops. And I think, I dare say, a lot of you will have items like this anyway if you want to give them a go. You'll at least have one. Um, oh, my ankles are clicking now. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is showing you my coffee staining wood. Now, i done um, my dresser, sanded it down and stained it with coffee the other day. And I stained all of my wood with coffee. Literally, when I say coffee, I mean instant coffee. This is just coffee from um, Aldi or Lidl, one of the two little bit of instant coffee. I don't know what it would be like using, um, what's it called? What Gary uses, not loose tea, you know what I mean. You know what I mean, oh, what's it? Ground coffee, that's it. You're probably thinking, I don't know what you mean, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> you mean coffee beans? No, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stain wood with that so you can see on this thing that I'm gonna show you. Um, I don't have any furniture pieces to stain at the moment, so otherwise I would love to just sand down the top of my table again and restain it. But this is actually what I stained all of my furniture down with. Even on the rocking horse, when it had big scratches on it, I'd done a coffee stain to get rid of the scratches. So if you have a nice colour wood and you have a little scratch on it, this is also a little scratch touch-up treatment as well. So I'm gonna share that with you now. And then we've got a few other things that I'm going to have on. I'm going to make in tassels, pom-poms, making a bit of macrame. There's something to do with rainbows, a little bit of stoneware. And firstly, this is the first thing. Rosie, calm down. You've got so excited about doing it that you've just rambled on. Right. So the first trend I'm noticing is in people's kitchens... They're sort of getting really chef -y. so like you're just noticing really lovely baskets with like olive oil in them and spices and then next to it you'll have beautiful chopping boards. If you go on any Insta-worthy Instagram, you will see that people have all these lovely chopping boards all stacked up, half of them marble, half of them dip painted and they're really beautiful. And then you go into the shops and you find out they're like £30 for a chopping board because they're the really expensive ones or the really tiny ones that you get on the amazing websites are like £10. So I want to show you how to get a little dupe version um, yourself but I also using the stain technique. Now I've got a few chopping bowls, I'm very much the same, I like a little trend I do. So oh, actually it's the same colour as my top. So this chopping board's from Marks and Spencer's, it's one of my favourites, it's my pizza cutting one. I cut the pizza on that side and push that towards the wall, there's all scratches on it. Um, and this little chopping board here, this was just from, you know when you get a cheese board at Christmas, something that you get for free. I masked it off, used a little bit of um, tester pot that I already had, painted it. So when they're all stacked up, they look really lovely. And the one chopping board I'm going to show you today so, is this one. But as you can see, it's really light wood. It looks a bit naff. It doesn't look quite as rustic and nice as the other chopping bowls. And this was for £1.99 um, from Home Bargains. 
and yeah it's just really light wood you don't look that great so we're going to make this really rustic by using the coffee staining technique i'm gonna put my apron on because it's one of my summer blouses and i don't want to get all of my um coffee all on it because i'm really bad at washing and stuff so i dare say i won't be able to get it get it out let's put the apron on so we're going to need to do some coffee staining these it depends on how large the item of um furniture or the piece that you're going to be staining but what i do is i always boil the kettle and get well I look like i'm naked under this apron i better like pull that out because otherwise i look like the naked chef um so what you're going to need is i've boiled the kettle and i've put roughly about five or six teaspoons of boiling hot water in there and i've let it cool down to room temperature um i suppose you could just use tap water i don't know i've just always done it like this i feel like it's less it goes a bit stronger because we have quite hard water here. If you don't, then perhaps just go ahead. And you're just going to need any type of instant coffee. Um, it doesn't have to be this brand, it can be any. Now, the more coffee you add, obviously, the stronger this will be. Um, so I'm just going to add a teaspoon to start off with into the bowl. And I'm just going to stir it around like you would do making a coffee. Now, if this is boiling hot, for some reason it doesn't seem to stain as well. I'm not sure why. Now, obviously, what you're going to do is it's always better to stain lighter at first, test the piece of inconspicuous wood that you don't like, or let it dry completely, re-sand it, and then build up on it if you don't like it. Because rather than it being too strong and then you having to sort of like re-sand it and then go lighter, it's always better to build the stain up. And what's perfect about this is there's no harsh chemicals. I'm doing this on a chopping board. It doesn't just wash off. For some reason, it really stains the wood. You know, like with your teeth, they say if you drink a lot of coffee or you spill coffee on something, you, nine times out of ten, you can't get it out. It's a really good stain, actually, but a really good natural stain. Another really good natural stain is apple cider vinegar. That makes a more of like a grey, sort of dark wood wash. It's always good to have a little try and experiment with natural products. Um, so I've stirred it around. It's just made like a really... Oh, a really strong coffee. It keeps rolling down to the bottom. Um, and there's a few lumps in there, but that's fine. And then what else you're going to need is either like a nice sort of like non... What's it called when you get like a cloth it doesn't leave like residue of like fluff off it? I know what I mean. I'm just using a little bit of kitchen paper, like paper towel at the moment. And what I'm going to do is now you can mask this off if you want. Now this chopping board has not been sealed or stained at all, so it doesn't have like a shiny surface. Now if you were going to be doing a table anywhere else, you would have to sand off the varnish or the wax so that the actual wood can be porous enough to soak in the coffee. Um, if not, it's just not going to work. It's going to sit on top. Unless you've got like a scratch just took the varnish off and you just want to feel the scratch, then obviously you're not going to need to sand that. But just clean the area first, let it completely dry. And another little tip is as well, if you want to wet your wood first, it stops so much coffee going onto it, so it also stops it being so strong. But I'm just going to get a normal paintbrush, it's a thick one, two inch one, and I'm going to dip it into the coffee. It's a little bit messy, this job. Make sure I take it off. And it's just the perfect, as you can see, it's a really beautiful rustic stain. Obviously, I wouldn't normally be standing this up. I'd be laying it down. It wouldn't be running down and dripping. And what's nice about this is, is you could mask this off and have like one side light coloured or darker. Now, the chopping board from Marks and Spencers, I think I've got that in the sale. No, I know I've got that in the sale. That was originally $19.99. A lot of these nice chopping boards, even in places like TK Maxx, they're like £10. So you can get like a, for $1.99, a little bit of instant coffee you've already got and get one of these really like these culinary, beautiful, like, rustic chopping boards. They look really nice. And the reason I'm demonstrating this as well is because then you know that you can do this on wood tables, chairs, sideboards, any wood that you've got indoors that you want to stay. And when you start to realise the colour difference is really pale and it's coming out a beautiful colour. Now, I would probably go even darker with this because you'll see when I do this. Then with a the paper towel, leave it on for a little bit and then just give it a little wipe over. This will not go any lighter. In actual fact, when it dries, it seems to dry darker than that. So it's gone from a really pale whitey colour to a darker sort of oaky colour. And I always stain all of my furniture, so even like in my like dining, like dining room when I've done a tour, my dark top of my actual table, like dining table, that's been coffee stained, smells amazing. Weirdly enough, 
on wood, once you've sawn it down back to like its natural state, you can kind of see the difference there. And the coffee soaks in. You don't actually get left with a smell of coffee once it's dry. While you're doing it, it does, but it just smells like wood. Um, so I would probably do this darker so you can give it more coats to build up the depth. That will work a little bit, maybe lift it, like take it a darker shade. But if you really want it darker, I'd suggest putting a little bit more coffee in that. So that's a coffee staining idea. So you can see from the top how dark it was, um, light it was. And it's just going to be a lot more fitting now with the other ones on the kitchen side. So you can just buy loads of different shapes, of cheap chopping balls, stack them up. Once that's completely done, obviously. Look really rustic in the kitchen, it just adds a little accessory haven't got to spend a lot of money but the reason I wanted to show you that is not necessarily for the chopping board purpose more so to do with the fact that I wanted to show you how I stain my wood um, so we're going to put that to the side and that's how I stain wood with coffee now the next thing we're going to go on and do is at the moment because of the coronavirus pandemic like the little, they're like little symbols of hope. Like we've got rainbows everywhere. My children are painting rainbows on like bits of paper and stuck them out in the windows. They're absolutely beautiful. So what I thought would be a really lovely idea is, and also rambling on, I'm noticing there's a lot of rainbow in decor and clothing at the moment anyway, which is really, really a bit coincidental. But I was noticing they were sort of creeping in just before all this happened. Um, and I'm also loving that children's bedrooms, they're getting more like neutral and a little bit more like, um, I'm noticing you're having like felt pom-pom garlands, there's tassels, there's like that Dalmatian print walls or the geometric shapes on the walls. And this, you can do it like that or you can do it even bright colours, like my boys' room's bright colours. This is really versatile, but I'm doing it in a very sort of like earthy macrame colours to go with my scheme downstairs. So what I'm going to show you is, oh, I better get another one to show you what I'm doing. Oh, I can do it that way. So I've got these placemats um, over there, they're from Ikea originally, um, and this one is a little bit tack like tatty at the sides, I think Bertie's had a little go at it, and to be honest I always have one spare, and especially now I've got little like a rectangle one in the middle, I don't need this to sit under my plant pot on the middle of the table, so I thought, Do you know what, I'm going to use this, and I thought, I'm, I've got a little idea now, so if I cut this in half, which I have done, um, I thought, this is like a really lovely shape. So you could turn this into a rainbow by using pastel colours and painting this up. And then we can add some tassels and like hang it up and it'd be really beautiful. So what I've got is I've just got some white chalk paint. And this is from Aldi. They've got loads of chalk paint and stuff like that most of the time. This was 4 99 for a large tin and I got, it's called chalk white. And what I'm going to do is, because this is woven anyway, it's got like sort of how many layers of woven it's got. I'm roughly going to paint about three. It's about the width of my paintbrush actually, so then I've not got to take nothing off. Go over that, make sure you really fill it in. Now obviously, you could do this in pastel colours if you want to hang this in the children's room, or you want to hang them in the windows for the NHS. Um, you could do this in any colours if you've got, you know, poster paints or acrylic paints that the children use. You could use those, tester pots, anything you've got. Um, I'm going to be using this chalk paint and I'm going to be doing it white and then leaving the other recessions of the rainbow in the wicker colour because I think it looks really... I'm loving that boho look. I don't know what that's called, that sort of style, but you know what I mean, when there's all like the pampas grasses, the macrame, the wicker, the dew, I'm loving it. Um, so I'm just painting that on. Now if you had any wood or card, you could just do the same thing and cut it out. And I'm not saying everyone's going to have a willow placemat, but this is even something once the coronavirus is over, if you like the look of these, then you could make these anyway, because these are really, really beautiful. And a lot of places are selling, like, hanging rainbows, and they're quite expensive. Um, they're lovely, but they're quite expensive. So I've seen on a few, like, shabby chic websites, they've got, like, wooden hanging rainbows, and they're, like, £15, but you can get one of these placemats for £2 and just paint it little bit of wool or cotton. If you don't have wool, then pay a pound and get a ball of wool. Um, which I'm going to show you what I'm doing with that in a minute. And then I'm going to take it in about two. So I'm going to make it thicker, the white thicker, and the jute. This is really simple. This is something really good to get the kids to do as well. And obviously, every placemat you cut in half, because I'm aiming to cut the circle out, it's already a circle. Every one you cut in half, that makes two. Um, so you can get two out of this. You can make these as gifts. If you know anyone that loves this sort of macrame style, 
and the nurses or key workers could always make these for them as gifts. So then I'm just going to go in again at number two, and I'm going to I'm probably going to paint that whole bit there in white. And so far, that's looking really, really cute. And it's just like a very natural looking little print. But obviously, that's really wet. So I'm going to put that to the side. I feel like Blue Peter. This is the one I made earlier. So I made one earlier and painted it so that it would have time to dry so that you could see it. And it's really lovely. I'm loving that sort of like natural colour with the white. And what I'm going to do now with this is I'm going to get some wool and we're going to make, you know, like the tassels, like the clouds, what it's meant to be, but like very. The macrame style. I'm not going to stop saying that now. I'm very, very engrossed into that word. So, I've got this lovely big ball of wool. This was $3.99 from Aldi. It's absolutely beautiful. It's very much like a linen colour and it's a huge chunky twine. I had to get it. But I do have standard balls of wool outside. And I know a lot of you, if you don't have wool... You might have due, especially if you've been making crafts with me on YouTube, because I know a lot of my products I make like crafts, they end up being used with jute. So you can always use jute to do the same thing, exactly what I'm going to be doing, but just use jute instead. So what I'm going to do is, to make the little bits on the bottom of the rainbow, oh, I'm picking up the wet one now, is I want to use little bits of wool. So I think the best way to do this is to have my glue gun at the ready. You could use any type of glue, or what you could do is cut these out, and then I'll show you in a minute, sellotape them onto the back if you don't have hot glue or any glue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut lengths of this wool, and I'm gonna hold it next to that. So I'm roughly getting loads of the same sort of size pieces. Pinch them with my finger, just get loads and loads of pieces. I'm gonna do that quite quickly while I'm speaking to you. And another way to get that is to sort of pinch the top part and go like that, loop it, and then you just cut through the loops. So, then you end up with quite a lot of pieces that are very similar length. Do that again. They might get a little bit longer as we go along. Maybe I should have done one of these as I made earlier as well, because I'm getting all complicated. Now, I'm going to pinch these together. Now, I really like them as they are, but because this is a thicker wall, I'm going to brush this out to make this really fluffy. So, I'm going to pinch this really hard with my finger up here. And you can use um, any kind of, like, hard brush at the minute. I know this is awful. This is the brush that I bought for Bertie, um, but this doesn't work on Bertie. It literally does nothing, but it's got really sharp little bristles on it. You can use any kind of, like, hairbrush would do this as well, or comb. And I'm going to brush, brush this out, and it just makes it go really, really fluffy, which looks really lovely. I don't know if any of you have ever brushed wool out before, so I'm just being a weirdo. Um, I'm turning it around to make sure that I'm getting all the pieces. You will get a little bit come off, but not too much. And because I want that sort of desired fluffy effect, really, pull them extra long bits out. And then I'm going to plug my hot glue gun in because you know what? I haven't even done that. So let's get the hot glue gun on. Plugged in ready for the day. <laughs> Got my extension lead on though. So I'm winning there a little bit. And just put the hot glue gun on. Oh, here we go. Make sure I've got a knot, a knot, enough hot glue. While I'm doing that, I'm going to be cutting some more wool, getting that ready. I hope you're all safe and well, by the way, um, and that you like the coffee stain. I've been getting so many people asking about the coffee staining um, since I've done it on my Instagram. Sorry. I'm going to do a few more. Where's the scissors gone? Oh, not quite me. Look for your eyes, Rosie. It's just quicker to do it like that. It, they end up getting like the same sort of lengths then loads of them, pinch them and brush them out. So we've got our fluff for the bottom of the rainbow. Turn it around. These are just going to be lovely on the wall. I'm going to have these out in the um, conservatory. And to be honest, you could sort of like put these sort of patterns all the way around these sort of things like that and have circles on the wall. I'm noticing on a lot of like Shabby Chic stores, like, no Shabby Chic, you know like H&M Home and Zara Home, they'd have something like a whole circle of these or even like half circles and stuff as sort of like wall art, 
with like the fluff sort of around them and fruit frills and tassels and goodness knows what. And um, so now my hot glue gun is on. Is it on? Yeah, we're on. I'm gonna turn it onto the back now and all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do nothing because the hot glue ain't ready. <laughs> it's not even ready yet. It's not even ready. I'll tell you what. While we're waiting for that to hot glue, I'm just gonna show you as well. This isn't really a craft, but I just wanted to show you how you can upcycle while you're at home some of the pieces that you do have. So if you watch my videos, you may well have actually seen this, um, but I love sort of all these sort of stone decor pieces indoors. And I've got this lovely stone artichoke. Um, I got this from the range, I think this was 5 99 And I also got a smaller, much more nicer shaped one in a dark olive green. And I was tempted to kind of keep it green. And then I started seeing on like places like Neptune and other websites, they had these really beautiful artichokes and they're all in lovely white. And they're like 20 to 40 pounds. And I thought, you know what? These were only 5 99 I could probably paint these, give these a little bit of shabby chic with a little bit of like white chalk paint and get these looking lovely and white. Um, really simple. You could even use a little tip to sort of like wipe it off a bit to leave it looking like shabby, like a whitewashed stone. But I've done the other green one and I actually think they look really expensive and they look exactly like the ones that you would get on Neptune. So that's gonna go in my hallway once it's all painted and decorated with a few little books and stuff. But this is like an ornament that I paid like, yeah, 5 99 for, which if I got it in the white and got it off a website like Neptune, it would have cost me like 30, 40 pounds. Um, and another thing I've done is I'm going to give this another little coat actually because this is a little bit just whitewashed, the wood's really sucked it in. Um, but from my junk shop, my local junk shop, they sell like these sort of obliques. It looks a bit of an obscene at the end, I know. I'm very aware that some of you might think that. But they were like these purpley colour over the top of this dark wood. And they sell things like this on websites like Oka and is it... Greyish, yeah, like them sort of websites. You know the really beautiful sort of rustic ornaments and these are called obliques. And I thought, you know what, I'm not spending £75. That's how much some of them are, £75 on an obelisk. Um, so I paid a fiver for this down the junk shop and I've painted it in white. I'm going to give it another coat and then this year again will go on my red, red cover as like a really beautiful little ornament. So you can pick up pieces. And another little tip as well while we're for the hot glue gun, I've got these little candle sticks as well that I'm going to start upcycling. But I'm really loving the bobble look, um, so you know like the bobble look. So what I've done is I've got some of my air drying clay, rolling little pieces like this into a little ball, and then pressing it on, um, and then painting over it. So then you can glue these on after to make sure they're really secure, and then give them a little coat. You can do these on jugs, plates, bowls, anything you want, and you can actually get your own bobble effect on these, so just a little tip. Now the hot glue gun is ready, we're gonna get on back on with our rainbow. Um, so where am I doing, what the rainbow? That would help Rosie, give me the rainbow. After this, I've got one last craft, but it's my favorite, I'd say. Um, I've lost a glue stick. Rosie, come on, be a bit professional, for goodness sake. Um, so I'm just gonna run a little bit of hot glue, and I mean literally probably about an inch worth, because this dries really, really quickly. And I'm going to pick up some of the, the fluff. Try not to be too perfect with this because you can go over and trim this after. It, it hasn't got to be perfect. We're sort of just gluing this on the back and then adding some more glue as we go along. Try and spread it as far as you can because these really fluff up as well. And so we're starting to get like the fluff tassels. Once this is dry, I'm gonna go over this anyway, with the brush to make it all nice and smooth down. Some more glue. If there's any of that wool that's sort of like, you could do this one piece at a time if you want. I'm just a bit of a rusher. So I don't like to sit around taking time. And I've also got chicken in the oven as well, so I'm probably thinking I'm gonna get on and do my dinner. Um, I'm gonna do that side, fill it up a little bit more, and what you can do is then put some hot glue over the top to sort of build this right up. I've got a little drop on there, use that one. 
and I'm going to now, it's a little bit cooler and I'm not going to burn my fingers, I'm going to run along and press these on a bit better. And then I'm going to give it a little brush. Some of these will come out and that's fine, but we need to distinguish where the gaps are. So I'm going to start to get it really looking cute. Obviously, don't be doing it. It'd be better if you laid this down and then fill it right in so you've got no gaps as well. And then obviously afterwards, you can go across with some sharp scissors and trim off the excess and make it look really... I'm trying to do all this like one-handedly. And then fill in all the gaps. And I'm going to do this side. I suppose you could do the whole underneath. Um, and I'm going to continue to do that side as well. I've not actually got enough wool prepared, but I'm just going to finish as much as I can so you can see. Because these are more like, these aren't like finished crafts. I'm just trying to give you some ideas. If you like these sort of things at home and you just think, do you know what, they're really expensive. Same as me, I just think that's really dear. I don't know how sometimes they justify charging what they do. Um, because really, it's quite simple to make, isn't it? You could always get a clean one of these and then glue these two together so that you end up with a really neat finish. But I think when you're hanging it on the wall, no one's going to see that bit anyway, so you're not actually going to see that. But if you're a bit of a perfectionist, you can obviously do that. If you want to do pastel colours, but you've only got like reds and greens and bright colours, just add loads of white paint to it and make your own pastel colours if you want to do these for a little girl or boy's room or the playroom. They'll be really cute. I'm going to make sure that's stuck on. Right, this is as far as I can go with it because I've not got any more wool ready. But obviously it's to show you what it roughly looks like. Brush it out, make it all nice and fluffy. And then trim that side as well. And just keep going. To be honest, I'd probably fill that in a little bit more so it's a bit more thicker, that side. But once that's done as well, like just do it like that so it looks like it's finished. And then just hang it up with a little bit of wool or a little bit of a loop at the top. And you can hang it up and it's just a lovely little macrame rainbow. And it's absolutely beautiful once they're done. That'd be really lovely. I'm going to finish that off in a minute and that'll probably be... I'll probably be holding it in my picture for the video. Now this is a really quick one. Um, but I wanted to show you this because I'm noticing as well, online there are so many beautiful baskets with pom-poms and tassels on. And there are so many... Let me unglue the glue gun. And there are so many like beautiful cushions with big tassels on the end of them. And I just wanted to show you, you can make them at home and sew them onto the corners of your cushion yourself. Or you can tie them up and hang them on your bag. So I've made this giant tassel earlier. I'm going to show you how I made it. So this is just a lovely wicker basket thing that I've got from H&M Home. And I've made a big DIY tassel and I feel like it's really changed the look. And obviously all the things I've made, you're probably thinking they're not that great at first glance but once they're in the room and they're all sort of hung up together they look really beautiful and you really get that sort of natural look without spending loads and loads of money um paint me on now a little bit of paint on the arm <laughs> make sure i've not got none on my top no i haven't um so right i'll show you how i make them giant tassels so you're going to need like a big piece of sturdy card or a clipboard or a bit of wood anything that's nice and big that you can wrap this around and I'm just going to, it's so simple, I'm going to get some of this wool ready because otherwise it gets a little bit stuck to the yarn and then I can't, and you can use any wool for this because I brushed that wool out anyway to get it fluffy so you don't need to have big chunky wool like this, in actual fact it'd probably be easier if you use the thinner wool. And what I'm going to do is, I've lost the end, I'm going to get the end and the top of my, it's like fluorescent paper card and it's got like one sheet on it and a bit of card on it because that's card will tell. And I'm going to sort of hold that piece up like that and sort of put it over my hand so that I've got this piece for after. And I'm just going to wrap this around the entirety of the piece of card. It might start to bend and curve, but that's fine because it's still going to be really large. As you can see, that tassel isn't as large as that anyway because you need to trim these. You can make these giant. You can do any colours. And it's also a lovely way to interpret a little bit of light, add a bit of colour into a room. So in my living room, I've got loads of these sort of beiges and natural colours. But I'm thinking I'm going to make a few um, cushions. I'm going to make a few of these in black or like a charcoal grey. 
and then I'm going to stitch them on the corners of the cushions because they're tasseled cushion covers. You're talking about £15 for a cushion cover on H&M and that's just for the cover, that's not even for the infill. But yet the plain cushions you can get for like £3.99 on there. So a ball of wool that you can get for a pound and you can get loads of uses out of it. You can make the tassels and then sew them on the corners yourself. And this is the same principle to do um, pom-poms as well, but obviously you would tie it from the centre and then cut both ends rather than just one end. Um, but I'll show you that as we go along anyway. I love making pom-poms. I love making pom-poms and sticking them to baskets and cushions. They just look really beautiful as well. We can make pom-pom garlands. I have got a video where I make pom-poms. I'm going to look for it. I think it's an autumn craft video um, and I use a fork. If I can find it, I'll link it below in the description box because then you'll be able to see as well anyway. Um, so I'd say that's enough now and I'm just going to cut, cut it to about the same length as that little long piece that I've got at the top there. So now I've got these two pieces. I'm going to tie them together at the top. So this is the end and the top. Oh, it's a bit tricky to do on the camera. Tie them together, make sure it's on the top and double knot this. And then what you've got to do is, is bring this piece under and out that side, and then put that piece under that way and out, just so that you know the whole of it's wrapped. And then do another double knot on the top. And this is just what you will then use to sort of tie it onto something. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut right at the bottom. So I'll release this all. And you'll end up with something like that. So that's really nice. Make sure you brush it out with your fingers. One side will be longer than the other. That really don't matter. And then I'm going to cut a piece of wall off. Make sure it's long enough so that we can wrap this around a few times. So what I'm going to do is, it looks like doll's hair, doesn't it? I'm going to get my piece of string to the sides and hold these two up and I'm going to squeeze this down and pull it so that I get a really tight little circle at the top and then now with this piece of wool I'm just going to put it there and press down with my thumb to make sure it stays tight and I'm going to wrap this one around it. Basically you're just wrapping this around at the top just to tie it in together. And I'm going to double knot that. Once I've double knotted this, make sure you really double knot it tight as well. It's super tight, it's not coming undone. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim the excess off really close to the knot, but try not to cut the knot, obviously, otherwise it will all unravel. And then we're left with something that looks like this. It looks like a little fluffy octopus. Um, but this is going to need brushing out because this is a chunky weave. So as I said, if you use like a finer wool, you wouldn't actually even probably need to brush this out. So I'm still going to pinch it really tight where the knot is. And I'm going to brush this all out. You will lose a few fibres, but it's fine. Because how much it costs you to make this tassel? How much it would cost in a shop to buy a lovely little wool tassel? Can you imagine if you went into a shop like Anthropology or you went into like Zara Home or H&M, how much would it be, or Urban Outfitters, to buy one of these giant tassels? Probably about six, seven quid, so... And look how much wool you get on a bowl that I've got for 3.99. I'm going to make loads of these. This is probably about 25 pence worth of a tassel. So if you lose a little bit, it's not the end of the world. And I'm going to use the leftover trim while I cut off this actually to finish my rainbow. Um, so really brush this out. And to make sure that you've really brushed it out, then upside down it and inside out it like that so that you get the inside as well. So that once it's all brushed out, you know that you've definitely got all of the little bits brushed out. So you've not got no like big chunky bits left. Not actually losing that much to be honest. Now, if this is synthetic, obviously I know this is wool, but you can get synthetic type walls, and this synthetic then don't, obviously don't do this, this is a bit chunky anyway, but I've been seeing people sometimes straighten these if the wall's a bit, if you've had it on the last bit of the bowl and it's the tiny bit, you can get kinks in this, but I would just say damp it down with like a bottle of water, damp it down and hang it out to dry, so it will pull it straight and it will all come out, try not to use straighteners and stuff on it, just in case it is synthetic. 
think this is proper warm, I'm not sure. I've lost the tag now. Just cave on it fro. So then I'm just gonna put it down and we can have this as long as we want it. And another nice thing is you could put a few beads on here, have these hanging there really beautiful. You could make a tasseled garland to hang, especially at Christmas time, they're lovely. You could have these in a room, tasseled all up, hung on a bit of dew, loads and loads and loads of these. How pretty would this look? Or you could lay a loads of different coloured tassels to a basket or put them all the way around a basket. Just really, really stunning. So I'm just gonna hold it at the knot and squeeze it really, really tight to make sure that I've got it all down. And then once I'm at the length of roughly where I want it, I'm then gonna cut it flat against my hand. Gonna need some really sharp scissors for this. And you're never gonna get it perfect the first time. And then what I do is then I bring the scissors in that way to cut it so I get like a straight edge. And then I just sort of trim them up with, just by eye really. They don't have to be completely perfect. And then we've got a beautiful handmade tassel. This is a really big giant one. Now obviously if you put these on the corners of cushions, you could just use a little needle and thread and sew these to the corners of a cushion. They'd look really beautiful. Or yet again, like I said, hang them from a basket or something really beautiful. They look really lovely. Um, and pom-poms are the same concept. So when I tied them up, rather than cutting at just one end, you'd tie it in the middle instead. Like rather than at the top, you would tie it in the middle. So that's the middle. And then you'd cut through the ends and then it frays into a ball. I just think they're really lovely little crafts and I'm seeing these everywhere at the moment and they're charging a lot of money for them. So, you know, you can get a £10 basket and add nice thing to it for about 25p. So you've spent £10 on a basket rather than spending £40 on a tasseled basket or a tasseled cushion. They're always more expensive and they're so simple and easy to make. This wool that I will say is absolutely stunning. This is from Aldi. It's so beautiful. It's like a really lovely linen beige colour creamy beige colour and then I'm going to use all of this leftovers to finish up my rainbow <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed these little crafts I know they're not the most amazing thing in the world but I've not I can't go out to get it um ah, <laughs> sound like a little goat there didn't I to go and get supplies so hopefully this will just be like a little escape and it just spark a few ideas if you want like this style and you want to get going and do some bits. My favourite is definitely the tassels. I'm not going to lie. How cute does that look on that bag? Looks amazing. And um, yeah, I hope you take care. Stay safe. Stay well. And um, I'll be back and I just can't wait. Oh, I can't wait till the shop's open. Obviously, I hope everyone's safe. That's not the most important thing. But then I can start bringing you hauls again. Getting a few craft bits. And oh, I'm getting wool in my mouth now. <laughs> <laughs> sound like a go when I'm turning into one um, get bits done it'd just be really nice but I don't think this is too terrible for a little make do video I hope it brings you a little bit of happiness and a little bit of like normality for a moment and escapism so you take care stay safe I've been Rosie Henshaw bye